A story that I don't like to tell people because it's one I used to find pretty embarrassing is one about one of my first jobs. I was 19 years old and I was a waste management consultant, or for lack of better terms, a dog poop scooper. I would drive around my city going in people's backyard to pick up and dispose of their animals' excrement. Not only did I feel pretty gross every night after my shift, I felt deeply ashamed of the work I did and I was always embarrassed to tell people. However, I'm pretty grateful for that experience because it taught me three important life lessons early on. And that is number one, any work is noble work and it's important to have the most respect for the people that do the jobs that nobody else wants to do. Number two, this taught me humility the hard way through this experience, I learned the world didn't owe me anything and I wasn't entitled to anything. But most importantly, number three, this experience taught me what could be. What could be if I didn't dig deep and put in the work on myself to actively pursue my goals. See, I knew very early on that I wanted to get into tech. However, in the midst of living a very comfortable life, I was never able to push myself to the point of putting in the work to achieve those goals. The grandiose ideas of what I could become if I put in the work, but most importantly, what I could become if I didn't put in the work made me so deeply motivated to work hard on myself. And I don't think this is something that most people can achieve in thought. Matter of fact, I think it can only be achieved in practice. By putting yourself in a less than ideal circumstance for an extended period of time so you can get a taste of what life could be like. And while I feel extremely blessed to have the opportunities in life that I do, and by by and large have achieved most of my original goals, I am nowhere near the point I thought I would be at when I first set out on this adventure of getting into tech. I've been in this industry for seven years now, and if you were to ask me seven years ago when I first started getting into programming, where I would be at by now, I would have told you that I would have my own startup idea going, or at least be a top level engineer. The reality is I am nowhere near the skill level I originally thought I would be at by now. Now don't get me wrong, I have times where I crush people's expectations or even my own expectations and fix a critical bug or write a really good piece of code. And then I have times where I get stuck for hours on a problem that someone else probably could have solved in a few minutes. Times where even after seven years, I still feel like I'm bad at programming. Now, I fundamentally understand that this is the imposter syndrome talking, or at least that's what I tell myself. But software engineering is one of those skills that you slowly improve over time to the point where you don't even realize all the progress you've made until so you can look back on all the years. But even when I feel like I'm bad at coding, I have four principles that I stick by that have continually helped me progress in this field over the years. And in today's video, I wanna share those four principles with you guys. Starting with number one, working with people significantly smarter than me. The bottom line is you are the average of the five people you spend your time with. And this is also so true for the people that you work with. I learned a fair amount at my first programming job, but it was a small dev shop with like five devs, three of them being interns. There wasn't this level of mentorship that looking back, I realized I needed at the time, especially as a new developer. But the level of growing I did at this company was nothing compared to my next job. See, at my next job, I worked with a handful of developers significantly more experienced than I was, and there's this one guy in particular that really stands out that helped me build a very solid foundation as a software engineer. Not only did this guy help me understand the ins and outs of native Android development, he also taught me the importance of well-architected, clean code, which can be translated into any type of software one could build. At this company, I also learned agile, testing, DevOps, how to properly work on a dev team. So many important skills that make a great software developer. And it wasn't like I needed my handheld throughout this entire experience. Matter of fact, most of my learning came from just observing how these higher level developers operated. I grew significantly more in this role in just six months than 18 months at my previous company. And again, it just boils down to being around people 
who were significantly smarter than me every single day. Now for principle number two, and possibly the most important principle of this video, which is the people game. Getting people to love you and being somebody that people want to work with is such an important skill I think a lot of software developers overlook. And I really believe you could be an average level programmer, but master the people game and still kill it in your career. If you're good at communicating, at leading others, at helping others become unblocked, you'll be able to climb the career ladder much faster than let's say a person who is really good at programming, but has poor communication and poor people skills. And becoming a people person is certainly a skill. Some people have this naturally, but some people really have to work on it. Either way, it's certainly something you can learn and get better at. I could reference the points in the famous book, How to Win Friends and Influence People, but I think somebody who has these traits embedded into them naturally is my fiance, Allison. In an otherwise overlooked career path as a hairstylist, Allison has crushed every negative connotation about those in her industry. I've watched this woman move to a new city not knowing anybody and build a six-figure clientele during one of the hardest economic times in recent history, the 2020 pandemic. And the way that Allison has built this business is not only because she's extremely talented, but she's a natural at connecting with people. Her bosses adore her, her clients absolutely love her, and even outside of work, Allison is that friend to lean on. I've had the pleasure of observing Allison over the years, and here's what I've learned about how she's a master in the people game. Number one, she never makes it about herself. It has once been said that he, she, who asks the most questions leads the conversation. Allison never makes it about herself unless obviously prompted to. One thing that I see people do all the time that honestly just makes me cringe inside is constantly talk about themselves, how great their life is, what they're doing with it, etc. And when you're constantly making it about yourself in conversation without being prompted to, it just shows this level of insecurity and by default is pretty unattractive. However, if you can be genuinely interested in somebody else's life and hype up their ideas and aspirations, I promise they will love to be around you. Number two, she's an exceptional listener. Even though Allison has hundreds of clients she sees every month, she has this ability to remember everything about them. Remembering these small things about a person's life makes them feel important, which Allison does a great job at. So how do these points translate into your career and excelling as a software developer? Well, first off, your coworkers are people too, and I promise it's okay to have a genuine connection with them. But secondly, you can use this as a way to advocate for your coworkers. Listen to their vision when it comes to the project you're working on and advocate for their needs in the workplace. Go above and beyond outside of your domain of expertise and figure out ways that you can help other people in the organization. This could be something like helping create marketing videos or being the face of your company at a tech conference. If somebody is struggling with a heavy workload, work one or two extra hours and take something off their plate. Go outside the realm of what you were hired for to help other people and most importantly, don't expect anything from it. Now for the third principle I want to talk about is something I think a lot of software developers and high level thinkers struggle with. But before we dive into that, first I got to give a huge shout out to the sponsor of today's video, which is Udemy. Udemy has been a recurring sponsor on this channel for the simple fact that it was a key resource in my coding journey when I was first starting out. And because of that, it is a platform I can really get behind. The first course I ever took was called the Complete Web Developer Course by teacher Rob Percival. This course helped me build an extremely solid foundation in web development and helped me sort of hit the ground running when I got my first internship. And while that course may be a little outdated, a course that I've heard great things about around web development is called the Web Developer Bootcamp from Colt Steel. This course has over 850,000 students with a little over 37 hours of video content that will certainly help you build that foundation in web development by learning the core concepts of programming mixed with some of the most in-demand technologies currently on the market like React, Node, and MongoDB. Now, whether you're interested in learning about web development, mobile development, or maybe something like 
data science, Udemy certainly has you covered. There are hundreds of thousands of courses to choose from on Udemy, but if you're interested in some of my top recommended courses, you can visit udemy.com slash collection slash Kenny underscore Gunderman. The link for that will be in the description. Again, huge thank you to Udemy for sponsoring this video. Now for principle number three, which is acting with a sense of humility. Going back to my first programming job, my first internship, I remember I didn't properly know how to use objects. I would create a new object every time I wanted to call a method. And I remember there was this time where my boss was walking me through how to write a piece of code and he told me to create a class. And I kind of froze up. I had no idea how to properly do that. And I remember I was so nervous to tell him thinking that he was going to question why the company hired me in the first place. But when I ended up just telling him the truth that I had no idea how to do that, he ended up being super helpful and for the first time ever explained classes and objects to me in a way that really made sense. It's always okay to ask questions and admit when you don't know something, especially when you're first starting out. You got to realize when you're a junior developer, most people aren't going to expect that much from you. But even experienced developers do this thing where we get stuck on a problem and rather than asking somebody for help who probably knows the answer, we struggle for hours or days to figure it out on our own purely out of ego. And I'm certainly no exception to this idea. But the reality is software development is a collaborative endeavor and you work on a team for a reason. Now, you certainly don't want to be somebody who works on a feature and immediately asks for help when you get stuck. Matter of fact, some of our most transformative aha experiences happen when we're struggling with code. So it's important to challenge yourself and exhaust all your options before asking for help. Something you're going to want to gauge depending on the size of the work and how long you've spent working on the problem. Anyways, humility is something I've seen a lot of programmers lack, not only when it comes to asking for help, but even when to admitting to when you're wrong or when you don't know the answer to a question. At my first company, I would work with the guy who would have all the answers and would sort of spit out all this technical jargon in meetings, but when it came to writing code, he would always write inefficient and buggy code. And when somebody would ask him about his code or ask him to refactor something in a pull request, he would immediately put up this defensive guard. And here's the thing, I understand the knee-jerk reaction of putting up a defensive guard because it can feel like a personal attack, even though it's very clear that it's not. I mean, I've made pull requests in the past that have gotten almost 100 comments, and when you see 90-something comments next to your feature in GitHub, your heart immediately sinks. But once you start getting defensive, you create this awkward work environment where you feel like people can't comment and suggest things on your code. But the more openness you have towards input means the more you grow your skills and the more you grow as a developer. And when some of my pull requests did get 50 plus comments, I won't lie, I did put up a bit of a defensive guard, but I eventually came to the conclusion of, okay, rather than getting defensive, I'm going to take in this input and I'm gonna make it my goal to get less and less comments on each consecutive request. Not only does acting with a sense of humility help you grow as a software developer, people will respect you a lot more for it. Some of the best software developers I know are the ones that can admit to when they don't know the answer to something. Now for the fourth and final principle that I live by is always striving to work in a growth oriented work environment. Here's a scenario. Let's say you're just starting out and you've gotten two different job offers. One where you'd be making 60K a year and then another where you'd be making 100K a year. At the 60K a year job, you're working with a very prominent tech stack and you're working with other senior engineers who are able to mentor you. You're constantly challenged and you're constantly learning new things. But at the 100K a year job, you'd be the only dev on a team supporting some legacy software working in an obsolete language. Which one would you pick? Now, I know that if 20, 21 year old me were presented with these options when I was just starting out my career, I would pick the 100K a year job in a split second. But after being in the industry for some time now, I promise you that experience you'd get at the 60K a year job would be absolutely invaluable. It's so important to position yourself in a way where you can grow in your career 
especially those first few years starting out. Because after one to two years of working in that growth oriented environment, your skill level will be at the point where you can find a job making 120, 130K a year. Companies that embrace growth, embrace mentorship, embrace new ways of thinking, new tech, Companies like this are the ones that you'll grow the most in. Now, I just want to say before I wrap up the video that every developer has a season or seasons where they feel like they're bad at coding. And it's important to constantly seek out growth, humble yourself, be a person that people want to work around. But most importantly, when you have those moments where you feel like you're a bad programmer, just remember your previous achievements because the reality is you wouldn't have gotten to the point where you are today if you were that bad. Anyways, thanks for sticking around this long. If you haven't already, I would really appreciate it if you could like, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you all in the next one. Peace.